how much you're earning on your invested capital. So let's say you make 30%, you're a great company. 70% times 30% gives me a sustainable growth rate of 21% in operating income. Notice the key number in both these computations is that return number. In fact, if there's a single number in evaluation that I want to get right, it's that return number. Return on equity or return on invested capital. And that scares me. And here's why. It's a one number in valuation where I'm completely dependent on accountants. To see why, take a look at the definition of return on capital. In the numerator, you have earnings before interest and taxes or operating income, an accounting measure of earnings. You multiply by one minus the tax rate, often an effective tax rate, an accounting measure of taxes. You divide by book value of equity plus book value of debt minus cash. Notice book value. This is the first place in valuation where we talked about book value. Everywhere else in valuation, we use market values. We use market value debt ratios for cost of capital, market value debt to equity ratios when we lever betas. But when we do return in equity and return invested capital, we look at book values. And here's why. We're looking at what was actually invested in these assets and trying to get a measure of whether they were invested well. So if you invested a little money five years ago and you're making great returns on those, I want to give you credit for that. The problem, of course, with using book values is every accounting judgment, every accounting discretionary call will also affect book value. Accountants can wreak havoc with book value. So return on equity and return on capital are key numbers, but sometimes you might have to go back and adjust what, for, what accountants have done or and basically undo some accounting choices to get to a reasonable measure of return on equity and return on capital. Spend the time, though. It's well worth it. So that's the first way you can grow, is to add to your asset base and do it well. It is also possible, at least in the short term, to grow by becoming more efficient. Let me explain how. Let's assume you have a company with a return on capital of 5%. Not doing very well, right? Let's assume that this company reinvests nothing, but improves its return on capital from 5% to 10%. The year that happens, it's going to double earnings, right? Because instead of making $5, you're now making $10. That's called efficiency growth. And it's going to be a function of how much your return on capital changes as a, fun as a percentage of your original return on capital, which actually creates an interesting implication. Efficiency growth is more likely at companies with really low returns on capital for two reasons. You have more room to improve, and that improvement is going to create a much higher growth rate. So if your return on capital is 4%, you're a much better candidate for efficiency growth than if your return on capital is 20%. Bottom line, though, efficiency growth is finite growth. What I mean by that is if you tell me you're going to grow for the next three years, the next four years, by becoming more efficient, I can go along with it. But if you tell me you're going to grow forever with efficiencies, it can't happen. You can only become so efficient and no more. So the bottom line here is when you think about growth, you have to think about those two places you can grow, by taking more investments or by running your existing investments more efficiently. Sometimes, though, when you value a company, you might have to go back to the top line, revenues. Why? Because your company might be losing money. Its margins might be changing too much. So here's a generic three-step process if you run into a company like that. First step, estimate revenue growth. Predict what the revenues will be in the future. I'm not saying that's going to be easy, but that's your first step. Second step, estimate a target margin. Tell me what your margin will be once your company gets through its growth pains. You can look at industry averages. You can look at the company's history. Third step, tell me how much you will need to reinvest to get that revenue growth. To do that, I use a ratio called the sales to capital ratio. Again, it sounds fancy, but here's the way to read it. If your sales to capital ratio is three, for every $3 in additional revenues, I would require you to invest a dollar in capital. That will allow me to estimate reinvestment. So let me take an example to illustrate this process. I'm going to use Sirius Radio in 2006. In 2006, Sirius had revenues of $187 million and was losing more than five times th those revenues. Its operating margin was minus 420%. That's horrible, right? My task is to make Sirius a viable company. So here are the inputs I used to kind of bring Sirius into the future. First, I assumed those small revenues become big revenues. So I assumed a revenue growth rate. Take a look at that column. You'll see my revenue growth rates are highest in the early years, and they become lower as you go through time. That's pretty much what you'd expect to see for young growth companies. It gets more and more difficult to sustain those high growth rates. The second input that drives this valuation is that operating margin. Look out towards year 10. I have an expected pre-tax operating margin of 19.57%. I got that by looking at Clear Channel, the most mature 
and most profitable company in this sector in terms of having been around a long time. I'm assuming that over time, Sirius's margins will converge on those. But I'm not going to be unrealistic. I'm going to assume that Sirius is going to lose money in the near term. So its margins will continue to be negative, but over time, the margins will improve to 19.57%. So two-thirds of my task is done. I've made small revenues into big revenues, and as the margin improves, those operating losses have become operating profits. Here's the third loose end. To get from small revenues to big revenues, I have to reinvest, right? How much do I need to reinvest? That's where that sales to capital ratio comes in. Every year I take the change in revenues and I look at how much I need to reinvest using that sales to capital ratio. So that tells me how much I'll reinvest. And notice I'm not breaking it down. I don't know whether that reinvestment is going to be in the form of net capex, acquisitions, R&D. With young growth companies, it's tough to gauge. But that reinvestment gets subtracted out from my after-tax operating income to get to free cash flow to the firm. Those three inputs, revenue growth, margins, and reinvestment, drive this valuation. And there's a danger when you do this. If you're not careful, you might create an unsustainable company in your tent. What I mean by that is you might reinvest too much or too little in this company. So to make sure I'm not doing that, here's the final check I run. When you have a reinvestment in a free cash flow to the firm, that reinvestment actually increases your invested capital each year. Since I knew what the invested capital was at the start of the period, I added the reinvestment every year to come up with my estimate of invested capital every year. I divided my estimate of after-tax operating income by that invested capital to come up with the return on capital every year. You're saying, so what? I took a look at what my end return on capital was, what I was estimating as a return on capital in year 10. What I wanted to make sure was that my return on capital in year 10 was a number I could live with, that I was comfortable with. I was okay with the number I got for Sirius. But let's add a, a, the, the number I'd ended up with would have been 3%. That would be too low. I'd have gone back and reinvested less. If the ending number had been 300%, I was reinvesting too, too little, I'd have gone back and tweaked that number to reinvest more. So when you have young growth companies, use that process to keep your valuations in check. So in summary, growth is a big input. Don't let it overwhelm you. Don't put the onus of certainty on your shoulders. Make your best estimate. Use all the data you have. But remember again, you can't endow companies with high growth. They have to earn it.